Hello and welcome back to the Complete Guide to Spin here at the Rock Road Academy. Today we're going to be taking a look at the Go SDK. So if you're a Go developer that wants to write WebAssembly microservices, this is the video for you. Let's crack on. All right, so let's take a look at writing a spin microservice with Go. For each of the SDK walkthroughs, we're going to go through five essential tasks. One, writing your first endpoint. Fortunately, this is already done for you with spin new, but we'll go through the code and understand how the development workflow operates. We'll then take a look at pulling out request headers, the body and the query parameters, all very common tasks when working with HTTP. And then of course, the more microservices you have, eventually one's going to want to talk to the big bad internet. Whether that be talking to some remote API or communicating with other spin microservices, you have to know how to make outbound HTTP requests with spin. So let's take a look at our first endpoint. We can open main.go and we will see that we pull in the spin HTTP SDK. We have an empty main function, which you don't need to worry about. Everything is going to be handled by the spin toolchain, which under the hood is used in tiny Go to compile your code to a WebAssembly module. Then in our init function, we set up an HTTP handler. A handler just takes a request and expects a response. To send that response, we have a response writer. All the spin SDKs are as idiomatic as possible for the language and the community that they cater for. So in Go, we have writers. You can see here, we use a writer to set an HTTP header, content type text plain, before using format fprintf to write to our writer, hello, Fermion. Your local build process is spin build, spin up, and it's usually a good measure to add follow all so that you can get the logs from your module. From here, let's run curl localhost 3000, where we get hello Fermion. Let's take a look at grabbing those HTTP headers. So let's go back to our main.go. And before we do any response stuff, we want to grab a header. We'll do something trivial with the value and we'll send it back on the response. So let's set name to be equal to r.header.get. And we'll request the x name value. Now, there's no error if this key doesn't exist. So we're going to build in our own safety blanket. And if the name does not exist, we're going to set it to world. And then let's swap the f print f, the f print line, to be f print f, where we'll put in our own new line, drop in our interpolation syntax, and your name. Next. Let's add a new header. And this time, we'll set x name. And let's do something with the name before we return it. Let's pull in strings dot to title case name. We can then jump back to the terminal, run spin build up follow all. We'll be seeing that quite a lot. Before running curl HTTP localhost 3000. Now, because we're not providing the X name header just yet, we should see hello world. Perfect. So let's include our header. I'm also going to use dash B so that we can see the headers on the response. We'll provide our X name and a random casing of David. We now get the X name header in our response with David in uppercase. 
and we have hello David on the body response. Working with headers with the spin go SDK, we just call a get function, we pass in a name, we get a value back, the job is done. Nice and simple. So let's just crack right on and grab the HTTP body. So let's do body equals r dot get body. This returns an IO read closer and an error. So let's make sure we check for the error condition. Now, I don't like copilot suggestion to throw a panic. So instead, we're going to call HTTP error where we could pass in a writer and an error and say internal server error. Although really, I guess this is a status bad request because there's no body. Let's hover over body and we'll see that we have an IO read closer. So let's do body string equals IO read all and we'll pass in our body. Now, if we take a look at this, we'll see that it returns bytes with an error. So let's make sure we're good Go citizens and we continue to check our error messages. Then we can do body actual string where we cast it like so. And let's just use it and the response like so. And don't forget the interpolation marker. So let's jump back to the command line and run spin build up follow. And we're going to do curl and we're going to pass in a body and I'll just say I raw code and we'll send it to local host on 3000. And we get hello world because we didn't provide the X name header. You said hi raw code. So that is how you get the body using the spin SDK. So let's clean this up a little bit. Let's just go back to saying hello and we'll get rid of the F for an LN. We'll continue to set text plane and we'll delete all of this. Okay, so let's do query params. This is going to be just as easy as grabbing headers. In fact, the code is almost identical. Let's say that our name is equal to r.url.query.get. And here we can take the name. And just like we did with the headers, we're just going to propagate it straight back using the X name header. We run spin build up and follow and we do a curl and we want to see the response headers. Localhost 3000 question mark. And because of that, we do need to quote this and we want to do name equals raw code. So the query helpers with the Go SDK are super convenient, just like fetching the header. We're dropping ours straight back in to HTTP response header. And as you can see, X name is raw code. So that just leaves us with one more thing. How do we do outbound HTTP? Let's take a look. Let's tidy up the query parameter stuff and create a new line. Don't know why I said that so slow. Next, we're going to use our spin HTTP SDK. And you can already see it has a get function. From here, you can call any URL. This returns a response or an error. 
also, like a good citizen, will do some error checking. And as much as Copilot really wants me to throw a panic and going to ignore it, and we're going to return a helpful internal server error error. Now, we could use IO read all on a response, much like we did with the body, but it's not going to show us anything new. We can run spin, build, up, follow all, you got it, like so. We can then run curl on localhost once the compiler's ready. So if you've seen these other SDK videos, you'll have seen that it always fails at this stage. And that's because spin is secure by default. It will only allow you to make outbound requests to domains that you've explicitly allowed. So let's update our spin.toml with google.com. Inside the spin.toml, we have the component, the trigger, and the build. Each component can individually specify the allowed HTTP host that you're allowed to communicate with. Here, we can do google.com like so. We can run back and run a spin, build, up, follow. And once that's online, we hit it with the curl and the HTTP request is made without an error. Now, if you don't want to be quite as secure, you don't need to specify google.com. You can also set insecure allow all. This will allow you to make outbound requests to any domain on the internet. And that is outbound HTTP requests with the Go SDK for Fermion Spin. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. If so, you can let us know in the comments. If you need help, you can also let us know in the comments. We'll be back soon with more Fermion Spin videos helping you build WebAssembly microservices. Until next time, we'll see you later.